Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. This is going to be my December 2023 wrap up. So my last month of reading for 2023, it's mid January now, um, but last year was really great. Um, and last month in particular, I read a lot of books because I ended up having to take quite a good chunk of time off of work um, at the very end of the year. So I got through a lot more books than I thought I was going to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into those. I kicked off the month by finishing a Norse mythology retelling, and it was The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek, narrated by Jane Entwistle, and this is a retelling of the life of Angerboda, who is known as the Mother of Monsters. She lives a secluded life in the realm of Jotunheim, and meets and falls in love with Loki, the trickster god, and you follow her as she has children by him and foresees Ragnarok, which is like the end of the world, and has to confront that fate. I gave this three out of five stars. This was a good book, but it didn't wow me, and it has similarities to Circe by Madeline Miller, but I personally enjoyed Circe more. Motherhood is a big part of both of the books. You see Angerboda just trying to make a comfortable life away from the gods and just raise and protect and love her children, and various other um, characters and stories from Norse mythology are mentioned as well on the side. The romance in here isn't particularly romantic because Loki is honestly a bit of a man-child, but there is a cute relationship with a lady named Scotty in the later parts of the book. That's very sweet. It's a solid female-focused mythology retelling, but it isn't particularly exciting or high-octane. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a post-apocalyptic fiction following a traveling theater orchestra group a couple decades after a flu pandemic kills off the majority of the population. And this book does have a loose plot, but mostly you follow a split timeline that covers a few people's everyday lives leading up to this pandemic and also present day with this caravan that comes vaguely under threat from this religious zealot who calls himself the prophet. And this was a 3.5 that I'm rounding down to three. Similarly to The Witch's Heart, I guess, it was a good book. I feel like it was objectively a good book that just didn't do anything for me personally. It actually made me feel kind of down and melancholy while reading it, which I don't particularly enjoy feeling. It's very slice of life, very low plot, honestly, and just like there's nothing exciting that really happens. It's pretty character driven. Everything and everyone is interconnected in some way. So I think that this will appeal, could appeal to you if you yeah, really like low octane fiction with just a splash of dystopia on top. I appreciate what this book did, um, but it's really not my preferred kind of story. All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is a sci-fi novella about a hacked security robot that calls itself Murderbot. And they're in charge of protecting these researchers on this planet, and things get dicey when they realize that someone is trying to kill their humans. And this was four out of five stars. Had a, had a really fun time rating this. Murderbot really grew on me. They have like really bad social anxiety. They hate being looked at and talked to. They just, all they wanna do is watch TV and be left alone, uh, but they have a job to do. And I mean, it was a novella. This was short and sweet. Uh, it's like a little mystery almost, but there's also some action. Um, most of the characters are just names um, and the world building is very limited, um, but it was perfect for this format. That's, that's all it needed. And I'm definitely interested in checking out more of Murderbot's adventures in the series and a 
Apple, I think Apple TV has a Murderbot series in the works. So uh, definitely hoping I'll be able to find a way to watch that. Recursion by Blake Crouch, narrated by John Lindstrom and Abby Creighton. This is a sci-fi thriller and you're following a detective named Barry who gets involved investigating this strange illness going around called false memory syndrome, where people suddenly have these memories of a life that they never lived. And you're also following a neuroscientist named Helena who has devoted herself to trying to find a way to preserve memories in order to ultimately help her mom who has Alzheimer's. And discoveries are made, paths cross, it gets mind-bendingly crazy, and that's all I can say. I gave this four out of five stars. It really does get wild, and it took me a little while to warm up to the characters in the beginning, but I did get there eventually. The middle is just like crazy, Near the end, I started to feel a little bit indifferent to what was going on, a little bit fatigued, and I was, I was ready to see how it all wrapped up. But overall, it was a fun, high stakes thriller, sci-fi thriller, similar vibes to his book, Dark Matter. So if you enjoyed one, then you'll probably enjoy the other. A Merry Little Meat Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This is a spicy holiday rom-com about a plus-sized porn star named B who gets cast accidentally as the lead in a holiday rom-com on a wholesome TV network, basically the Hallmark Channel, and her co-star is an ex-boy band pop star who is trying to rebrand himself in his post-boy band era and they have the hots for each other immediately but they have to keep their romance a secret or the movie and both of their careers could fall apart. And this is like my first legitimately steamy novel and I had a fun time with that. Four out of five stars. There are multiple explicit sex scenes, but not too many. There, there weren't particularly any like daring scenes. Uh, it was pretty basic stuff in my opinion, uh, but they were written just fine. I did enjoy the actual plot of the story. The side characters were all great. This has a lot of queer characters. It has sex positivity and body positivity. Um, I enjoyed it and I love this cover. I love the red trees with the color of the font. I think that this is a very, very pretty looking book. Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. This is an urban fantasy following Mercy Thompson, who is a like a 31 year old mechanic who is also a skinwalker with the ability to shapeshift into a coyote. And in this version of our world, supernatural and fey creatures exist. And some of them are known to the public. And Mercy gets involved in this murder mystery situation with the local werewolf pack. And this was four out of five stars like I maybe like 4.5 out of stars. I'm rounding down to four, uh, but it, <laughs> This is not a paranormal romance, which you might understandably think based on this cover. There is basically no romance in this at all. The world building around the werewolves is extensive and really well done. And considering, <laughs> considering that this book heavily makes use of the whole idea of alphas and dominance, it's probably the least cringy that it could be, like if that makes sense. It has alphas and, and all that stuff, but it's not a paranormal romance, so it was actually very readable. Uh, still a little bit cringy, but n really not nearly as bad as what I imagine. For my personal taste, that kind of thing would be in a, in a romantic 
<laughs> setting, but this has a serious tone. Um, I really like Mercy. She's tough, but not an all-powerful, cocky Mary Sue. Plus, she's a fully-fledged adult. She is over 30 years old. But this, the super fun part about this book is that it takes place where I live in the Tri-Cities in Eastern Washington State. Um, not a common setting, I don't think. So uh, this surprised me, and I'll definitely be continuing the series. The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Azad, narrated by Christine Tafik. This is a YA fantasy following a girl named Fatima who was orphaned as a child, and she lives in this city that is protected by this race of jinn called the Ifrit, specifically uh, protecting them. The Ifrit specifically protect them from these other jinn called the Shayatin, and Fatima inherits these particular powers that bring her into the affairs of the jinn and the royal family. I gave this two out of five stars, maybe rounded down from 2.5. The blur, the blurb for this makes it sound much more exciting than it actually is. Nothing really happens in this book. It just feels like nothing is driving it forward. And the few plot threads that there are just flap in the breeze, just doing nothing until the very end. The romance was contrived and unconvincing to me. It started off with beautiful world building and setting the scene, and I was excited to get into it, but it got dull pretty fast. The characters and intrigue and, and the magic just all felt underutilized, and I really enjoyed The Wild Ones by this author, I uh, highly recommend that, but this one just fell flat, unfortunately. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is a murder mystery that takes place on a train that gets stopped because of excessive snow on the tracks, and a man is murdered in one of the cabins and it's up to Detective Hercule Poirot, I don't know how you pronounce the last name, uh, to figure out who killed him. And this was four out of five stars. I enjoyed this more than I expected to. This was very funny at times. I was surprised by how funny it was. Um, beca because this was written in the 1930s, there are some racist stereotypes and things like that on occasion, so that's not great. Um, but it's a product of the era in the 1930s, but those things aside, I had fun with it. I, I enjoyed how it ended. I, and I like the kind of the format of it, how neatly everything is just laid out for the reader. And I'm definitely interested in reading more by Agatha Christie. Bookshops in Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is a prequel to the cozy fantasy Legends and Lattes. This follows the brash young orc Viv, who's part of a mercenary company hunting down a deadly necromancer, and she gets injured and has to recuperate for several weeks at this quiet town called Merc, where she makes friends with the owner of a derelict bookshop and uh, she's on the cover as well, and a bakery owner. And you follow Viv's slow recovery as she gets to know the town and deals with some inner conflicts. And I enjoyed this just as much as Legends and Lattes, which is a lot, five out of five stars, super cute and chill. This does have a bit higher stakes than the first book and includes a couple action scenes, so it isn't exactly on the same ultra chill vibe as the first book, but it does have a, a similar feel, just with a bit more action and drive. Um, I loved it, and uh, I, I really hope Travis writes more books in this world because uh, I just love them so much. And the last book I finished this year is actually nonfiction, which is super rare for me, and that was the audiobook for Owls of the Eastern Ice, a quest to save and find the world's largest owl, written and narrated by 
like the author, Jonathan C. Slatt. This is about his years-long effort to research the Blackiston's fish owl in its natural habitat in eastern Russia in order to put together a conservation plan. And he talks about the process of gathering data and tracking, setting up traps, and just his experiences with the people and places that he's in. It was kind of mildly interesting for a while at the start, then got more interesting once he actually started to capture and monitor the fish owls. And owls are my favorite animal, so it was cool to learn more about this specific species and uh, what's involved in field work. So those are all of the books that I read in December. Got through, I really got through more than I thought because I forgot that I was gonna have to take a kind of a chunk of vacation, so I did a lot of reading. Um, it was a great month, um, and if I'm talking a little bit strange, it's because I got Invisalign <laughs> over the winter break. So, I mean, I'm kind of used to them now, but in certain situations and saying certain words, it just sounds a little weird to me. I'm not sure if it comes across in the recording. I guess we'll see. I haven't watched any recordings of me talking <laughs> with this in. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I am really looking forward to <laughs> my 2024 reading year. Um, I've already finished a few books in January and I'm really hoping to finish several different series that I have going on. Um, I just read the third book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I'm on the second book in the Locked Tomb series, aka Gideon the Ninth series. Um, so yeah, I'm getting a lot of reading done and uh, I'm just about to go right into filming my Beat the Backlist reading challenge video where I'm gonna go through every book that fulfilled the prompt for the reading challenge so that's gonna be like 40 49 books <laughs> a lot of books so um, stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching I will see you guys in my next one bye <laughs>